people welcome even the bad people what's up bad people y'all show up too now sarver is the new donald sterling that's the word what if i told you that they already knew. They already knew. They already knew about Robert Saul. The league did nothing. They took it as hearsay. They didn't care. Not one bit. They didn't care. He has reportedly, and he has never denied it, saying the N-word over and over again. As we will go over the claims and the charges yet again. By ESPN, recounted conduct by Sarver they felt was inappropriate and misogynistic including the use of the N-word and lewd comments made during staff meetings. Former Suns head coach Earl Watson told ESPN that Sarver once used the slur after a game. You know, why does Draymond Green get to run up the court and say N-word? Sarver, who is white, allegedly said, repeating the N-word several times in a row. You can't say that, Watson, who is black and Hispanic, told Sarver. Why, Sarver replied. Draymond Green says N-word. You can't expletive say that, Watson said again. Sarver denied he used the N-word through his legal team, saying this is absolutely untrue. Sarver said he talked with his son's player who had received a technical foul during the game for using the N-word, questioning why he had received a technical when other players who say it do not. The player, through his agent, told ESPN that he does not recall speaking to Sarver that night. I've never called anyone or any group of people the N-word, or referred to anyone or any group of people by the N-word, either verbally or in writing. Multiple also recounted inappropriate conduct from Sarver, such as him once passing around a picture of his wife in a bikini to employees and speaking about sex with his wife. We're passing it around like a hot potato, like what in the hell are we supposed to do with this? That was just, you know, one early glimpse at the man. Sarver, through his legal team, told ESPN the moment has been twisted into something more nefarious than it was and that he has never discussed his sex life in the office. A retailer sent my wife and me a sample along with a brochure and I took a picture of her in the sample. I took the brochure and picture of her and gave it to the people at the Suns in charge of overseeing merchandise with the message, here's the catalog, this is what the swimsuit looks like, and if you have any interest in carrying this line in the team shop, then here's the number to call. Multiple current and former employees also told ESPN about conduct by other members of the Suns leadership team that they felt contributed to the work environment. While none said Sarver was involved in those incidents, Many felt that Sarver's own conduct contributed to a culture that affected how some other managers within the organization treated their employees. They said they don't know how no one has ever been held accountable. If the commissioner comes in and investigates to see what the expletive is going on in Phoenix, he would be appalled. Jason Rowley, president and CEO of the Suns, defended Sarver. 
This story is completely outrageous and false. It doesn't represent at all the Robert Sarver I've worked alongside of for 15 years. He's not a racist and he's not a sexist. And for more, we're joined now by Baxter Holmes. Baxter, you worked on this story for a year. Now, here's the problem. Former Suns coach Earl J. Watson released a statement Thursday. Everybody is called into this. Donald Sterling's up. Chris Paul seems to find all these people to go and be on the team with. <laughs> it's all been everywhere. Right? Now, it's all been everywhere. But let's get to the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. Because people seem to get things twisted, get it nefariously caught into bad deals, bad situations, the whole nine, right? Let's get into what's really going on and what the problem truly is. The problem truly that we see and note, notice is a growing fact. And what is that growing factor? Well, it's quite serious. The growing factor that we see countless time and time again is everybody is victims and prisoners of the moment. The NBA, the National Basketball Association, they have done one thing and one thing only. They have found a way. They have found a remarkable way to screw up. Donald Sterling incident, he had just gotten the job. This was his first look at Adam Silver. There's a major difference in that situation. See, Donald Silver was someone the NBA needed back in the day because he had money. He was the one of the richest owners in the game. Anybody needed something, they had to go to Donald Silver. I mean, Donald Sterling. On the owners, if they needed to make their salary caps and they had to take a loan, they would go to Donald Sterling and he'll give them the money for the, with the loan. He was the bank for the NBA. Then when the NBA ascended to new heights, they didn't need Donald Sterling anymore. Now he's a cancer to them. But they knew what he was when they was with him. Now, you knew what Donald Sterling was when you got Donald Sterling. This is not a surprise. This is not a, oh my gosh. You knew about Donald Sterling when you got Donald Sterling. See, the NBA don't want you to know that. Donald Sterling was their bank. And he was giving all of those guys money. 
whenever they needed to have a deal go through. Now, remember, Donald Sterling got caught on tape. So that was different. They don't have Solver on tape. But these NBA owners used to lean on him. Then when they didn't need him no more, now he's a cancer. All the stuff he did was just so terrible. When every owner in the NBA knew what Donald Sterling was like, none of them cared. They said nothing because they were getting their money. And he was the bank. Then when they didn't need him no more, no longer benefited them. Now, Solver came in. This was like a shock for these guys when Solver came in with his incident. What's up, X-Man? X is in the building. All right. So the league knew all about this. So when they got rid of Donald Sterling, everybody looked at him like he was the guiding light, the force. So Sauber denied all these claims because that's the only thing he could do, right? Deny, deny, deny. That's the only thing you could do is deny. <laughs> I know, but see, Robert Solver was a businessman. When he came in and bought the Suns, he was in real estate in Phoenix. When he became the partner, when he got with the SVP, he came in through a whole new real estate development company. But here's where Solver got the rest of you. Is he was so hands on. He was, I'm, I'm the everybody there. I'm the best guy there is. Right? He's Arizona, proud all the way to the end. <laughs> Well, he owned a bunch of hotels in the 70s. Uh, his father and him, uh, his, uh, I think his name was Jack, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, the way you look at all of this, Robert S Sawyer would donate all his money to the University of Arizona Heart Research Center because his dad died of a heart attack. So when that was done, they had the Sarver Heart Center. His father had all that property. He started inheriting because that's how you get it. That's getting the money the really old fashioned way. They inherited it. So he got the money because at 16, he was working at American Savings and Loans. So when you're working at American Savings and Loans, working for your dad's company, Hello, you walked into money. Yeah, he became a public accountant, went into banking because that's where he came up from, savings and loans and real estate. So now he's built himself up to get the Bank of Arizona well, it was the National Bank of Tucson, but it expanded statewide, and now it became the Bank of Tucson, I mean, the Bank of Arizona. Thank you. Now, at this time, Dr. Martin Luther King Holiday, 
that date was not, they would not let that become a holiday in the state of Arizona. Sarver supported <laughs> the governor that was keeping the Dr. Martin Luther King day being celebrated in the state of Arizona. Now, through the 90s, his whole re, re, real estate development projects, everything, right? Building himself up. Oh, man, his net worth, his empire with his real estate, his Emerald Plazas, all of that. He's got about net worth of $300 million. He was a booster for the University of Arizona's basketball team. The coach, rest in peace to Lute Olson, No, oh, yeah, Lou Oates loved him. And then when the Suns came along, that opportunity back in 2003, 2004, Sarver beat out everybody else because he was from Arizona, even though the people did not want him in Arizona. They didn't want him there. There has been problems with him from the day he got there, y'all. He criticized everybody. Like, for instance, hit the like button, good people. Shout out my link. Oh, this ain't, I'm doing it on the mobile. It's not the stream yard. Oh yeah, uh, the Patreon is sick. Now, he's more of a, uh, what they call an interventionist, um, those type of owners that have those uh, scouting departments. He didn't listen to any of them, and he dated facilities, isolated decision makers from players and coaches. The way he's been running the team in the front office, they think he's a misogynist, racist, and sexual harassment, firing uh, minority agents, and they, he had to fire, I mean, he had to hire Monty to try to cover his tracks. And, you know, this is, that was like a, a something he had to do by putting James Jones in the front office and hiring Monty because it was starting to come out that this guy is really not who they thought he was. But here's the thing. He's been determined that, you know, uh, the NBA has fined him $10 million, suspended him one year um, after an independent investigation determined that he used the N-word multiple times, sexual harassed, and insulted multiple male and female employees and engaged in demeaning behaviors towards em employees there. Now, the Colangelo's, who sold the team <laughs> to Carver, they knew, they knew the kind of man he was. And let's say, they say, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not racist. I didn't do anything. Let's say you're not, right? Let's say all the things they found in this investigation 
Let's take Sarver out of it. Let's put Michael Jordan, who's the owner of the Charlotte Hornets. If Michael Jordan had been investigated and it found out he said negative slurs, racist slurs against the Jewish people. He sexually harassed women on the job. He attempted and insulted and demean male and female employees at that company. Would Michael Jordan get a $10 million fine and a one year suspension? That's all you have to say. I don't have to compare it to Donald Sterling. I don't have to compare it to anything else. Taking the facts of what you know, if you saw what happened to him getting a $10 million fine and a one year suspension for all of the things that he did as an NBA owner, would Michael Jordan get the same treatment if it was reversed, Michael Jordan would not get a $10 million fine and would not get a one year suspension. He would be removed and be forced to sell the team. Then he will face individual lawsuits. They would have ripped and shredded Michael Jordan's entire history. If Michael Jordan said a negative word against the Jews, came out, sexually harassed people, assaulted multiple, multiple male and female employees with demeaning behavior, he would be gone. It's no question. Anybody black would know Jordan is gone. We're gonna be like, oh yeah, Mike gone. They gonna get rid of Mike. And the NBA would have got rid of him. But Robert Solver? Gets a $10 million fine and a one year suspension? Let's see if LeBron James speaks on this. Let's see what Chris Paul has to say about this. Let's see what Adam Silver Slipper has to say about this. Because he's going to have to address it today. This ain't something you can let go by. So I'm going to wait and hear what he has to say today. Because everybody now is seeing the so-called, we're not racist like the NFL. <laughs> You've just shown and proved that's a lie. Don't forget the Super Chat button is working. You can support the page by Super Chatting, even though they're sabotaging me. The people can still find the truth. If you use Cash App, it's dollar sign K A R C E N O. Carcino is the name on that cash app. You'll see Carcino for life up there. You see big picture of me in a green shirt that's cut off. And you say, oh, that's him. It's, incre it's incredibly egregious what they're doing right now. Do I got a PayPal? I do. Uh, it's KEV074, I believe. I don't know. But I believe that's it.
post it. Shoot, man, I had to do that later. That's probably in my description box, though. I used to, but no, nobody really used PayPal like that anymore. PayPal is just something you use to make the payments. I didn't know people still using PayPal for transferring money back and forth. Now, oh, that's the mail. I'm like, who the hell? The mail's here. No, Earl Watson was fired because. He was only there for two years, and then Earl Watson was fired. He was fired because he was black, <laughs> and they were just really filling the spot because they wanted someone they could have head coach for the Lola. The NBA has had this problem for a long time. Black coaches aren't paid like white coaches. Black coach was like, okay, pay him the bare minimum. Donald Sterling told y'all in that video when he was talking to her and didn't know he was recorded, there's others like him. He's not the only one. Nobody paid attention to that. He told you, I'm not the only one. Who do you think I'm going to sit down and have lunch with myself? No, I'm having lunch with other people like me. Now, they omitted that. But you look at people like Reinsdorf, who owns the Chicago White Sox and the Chicago Bulls. Who's shown and proven to me, he's one of them, he's just like Sauber and Sterling. But he's just smart enough not to get caught. Another friend of Donald Sterling. And let's take a look at his history. This is a man... Who he said, I told Scotty not to sign that long-term deal. This man could have made right by Scotty Pippen. Could have paid his players, but he said no. Why am I doing that? You signed the contract. I don't have to renegotiate. He didn't reward them at all for winning six championships. They never paid him. <laughs> Now, it's going to get even more interesting. It's going to get even more interesting. He didn't want to pay Michael Jordan. Let this sink in. Michael Jordan has turned this team from a hundred million dollar team to a two point two billion dollar team. He turned the league into a hundred million dollar league to a billion dollar league. 
I hate him as a player, couldn't stand him, thought he was an a-hole. But Michael Jordan clearly, clearly put the NBA on his back and carried the sport into a new stratosphere. And Reinsdorf did not even want to pay him. Matter of fact, Michael Jordan put it in his book. It pissed him off that much. It's in the conversation in the book. In the conversation in the book. Reinsdorf tells Michael Jordan to his face, no one man is worth this amount of money. When he wrote him a check for 30 some million dollars. And Michael Jordan said, well, you make more money than me. Do you think you worth that amount of money? You're the owner. You make more than all of us. So are you worth that amount of money? You one man. We the ones out here playing and winning the championships. Y'all ain't doing suicide drills. Y'all ain't doing none of this. We doing that. But this is the ownership you had to deal with. This is the same ownership that when the Bulls sucked, they went and made Bill Cartwright the head coach of the team so that they wouldn't have to pay any other head coach in the league to come play. Paid him way below scale. But it was an opportunity for him to coach because they knew the team was bad. And they weren't going to get any new players to help out. They knew they were going to suck. Let Bill just coach out the sucking years. Now we can just keep him under scale. We got a coach. We can look for a coach and we got time to scout. We're going to suck. When we get a coach in here we want, then we'll start bringing players in. Now, we finna get even more deeper. Jerry Cross, Krause, rather, is stepping down from general manager. The president of the Bulls organization Everything is getting ready to be changing now that Jerry is stepping down. The Bulls are moving on from Jerry. He's retiring and going off to do whatever Jerry was going to do. Now, here are the people that are most viable for the job. To run a front office. B.J. Armstrong. B.J. Armstrong. Is not only business savvy. He's also. Has a degree in nothing but business. One of the smartest men in the game. He's intelligent. He's a former bull. He knows the system. He knows the game of basketball. The only thing about BJ, he was black. He's black. John Paxson was the announcer. Paxson needed a job. He became the announcer for the Chicago Bulls. He was announcing games. And 
And he said, I don't want to do this booth stuff no more. I don't want to announce and call the games no more. Because he was terrible at it anyway. But they wanted him, he didn't want to announce the games. Like, I don't want to announce games. I want to be in the office. So Jerry Reinsdorf was like, well, Jerry's getting ready to step down, but BJ kind of wants the job, and BJ's kind of the front runner. They reviewed for the job. BJ was the much more qualified candidate. Everybody's like, well, it's BJ's job. You know, hire BJ. So Cross, I mean, Reinsdorf comes up with a solution. Okay. We got a solution here. Um, we're going to hire both guys. Yeah. We're going to have John's going to John's the guy now. It's John's job. But BJ's his assistant. He's going to tell him everything he needs to know. They're going to work together till now we got one good mind. BJ should have walked that day. As soon as they brought that up, he should have walked. They hired two men to do one job because they wanted the white man in there, but he couldn't do the damn job. So they had BJ, the one who should have had the job. And it was like, and it's, it fool, it, the media was confused. Like, why, why wouldn't you just hire BJ? <laughs> like, what's the, what, I've never seen this in the history of sports. You never saw it in sports history ever again. You never saw it in sports history again. You took John Paxson and made him the president or whatever when that title should have went to B.J. Armstrong. B.J. Armstrong was in a bid to go and have its own NBA team after that. B.J. quit after like a year of doing that nonsense, knowing that he was lied to because they told him, just take it. John's only going to be here maybe a year. And then the job will be yours. So just go with it. You know, we're really just trying to transition John, so maybe he'll get picked up somewhere else. But you're our guy, BJ. It was a lie, and they were using him to basically get John to learn everything BJ know. Shadow BJ, watch BJ do all the work, and you're going to be the guy. So Pac said, I quit. Something he should have did a long time ago. Because that was the play. <laughs> so Reinsdorf is just like Sauber. They all the same. Sauber supported the governor. His father was the same way. They grew up in the state of Arizona. Hello? Arizona? <laughs> right there, that tells you red flag. They took the money. They took the money. Mm hmm Well, when you look at it, look at what you um look at what you signing on to.
Oh, yeah, the people elected him. Yeah, was that guy named Meacham? He <laughs> said, that's why I stopped supporting the Bulls a long time ago, cheap bastards. My cousin was working for the Bulls. And they lied to him. Told him he was going to be able to move up into management. Remember my cousin went to work for the Chicago Bulls? He don't work there no more. He's in, he's in Arizona now. He worked for the Coyotes, the Phoenix Coyotes now. But what did I always say? As an organization, they're bad. That's why I told them you should have never came home. Don't ever come home. You come home to visit, not to work. You come back home, it's different. Mm -mm. You got to go out there and be great. You got to extend. You got to take what's there. We got to move up. Can't stay stagnant. Uh, no, um, my cousin is very well connected. And right now, that's just where he's at now. He's going, he has another job that's way bigger. <laughs> He's doing this right now so he can run this and have income coming in while he's getting ready to do something major. Something major is happening in LV, baby. LV. That's all I'm going to tell you. I'm just going to sit back <laughs> and wait till it happens. Now. Here's the situation. Now, the guy was, uh, what was his name? I think it was Meacham. Back in like 88, 87, he rescinded the Martin Luther King holiday and said, all the backers of the holiday immediately, he was like, we are blasting this new governor. Arizona was the only state that was sitting there fighting for the Martin Luther King holiday. Robert Sawyer backed this governor. So that's telling me if you're backing a governor who didn't want the Dr. Martin Luther King holiday honored in the state. <clears throat> Why are you going to be the owner of a business when 88% of the players are African-American? Thank you all for the super chats. And the cash app, I appreciate that. So. Yeah. We'll definitely get into more of that. But I just wanted to bring this to everybody's knowledge of understanding. If this was Michael Jordan, he made a comment about the Jewish people saying just what what Sarver is being accused of saying, why can't this person say these words and said derogatory is about Jewish people. And it's coming out of Michael Jordan's mouth, then sexually harassing or being this is what they found him guilty of through the private investigation.
sexual misconduct. All of these things, abuse towards employees, abuse of language, everything, violating all of these standards. All of this is in the complaint. $10 million fine, one year suspension. Michael Jordan wouldn't get that. I guarantee you, he'd be gone. He would have to sell the team. Now, Silver Slip is going to come out probably later on today or tonight and have to make a statement after they talk as to why they gave them out this punishment. They're going to say, well, well, it's because of the CBA. You know, we got no choice. Bull it. The choice of the problem is they don't have anybody available to buy the Phoenix Suns. <laughs> and making that vacant right now would be a hell of a problem because they would have to buy him out. And then after everything, after the pandemic, they can't do it. But we'll wait and see what Silver Slippers say. I'm not going to speak now until I hear what he has to say. But I already know the BS and the politics. So let's just wait for it. Anyway, I'm out.